This is the news station, WNEP 16. The issue at hand in South Williamsport is who is moving closer to the Little League World Series championship game. Little League teams from all over the world are battling it out on this second day of play. But aside from all that action, there's even more to do with the Little League World Series. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens is live now in South Williamsport to fill us in or fill us up as the case may be. Craig? Thank you, Karen. You know, it's been said that baseball is as American as apple pie and hot dogs. Well, I doubt seriously if you're going to find any apple pie here at Lomity Stadium in South Williamsport, but there are plenty of hot dogs, hamburgers, sodas, potato chips, you name it. This week, hungry fans will consume over 30,000 hamburgers and hot dogs, along with 3,000 pounds of french fries. Those watching the Little League World Series will also go through hundreds of pounds of barbecue, hot sausage, and believe it or not, 10,000 ice cream sandwiches. All the money made from those sales goes to the people who run the concession stands, mostly local service organizations. But where does all that food come from? Well, if you can look right over here, you can see a concession stand. All the food that's given to that concession stand comes from a plant I visited today in Jersey Shore, a plant that's been supplying Little League with eats for nearly 40 years now. These hot dogs are being made at Thompson's Meatpacking Plant in Jersey Shore. The family-owned business supplies Little League with all its hot dogs, as well as all the hamburgers, french fries, and dressings used during the week. That means big dollars for this plant every summer. We've added uh, approximately three employees uh, to our staff during this period of time, and uh, the impact, of course, is during the entire season as much as just the, the World Series, because we do supply uh, Little League employees who now have a job thanks in part to business from Little League is Doug Smith. The 20-year-old Jersey Shore man now can afford a car and a lot of other things. Doug, how do you feel now that you have a job? Oh, pretty good. Why? Uh, has a check coming in every week and uh, it's better than sitting around the house. The employees here also get overtime this week because they have to work harder to get the food out. As for the plant, about 5% of its total business each year is from Little League. There are others besides local businesses who also rake in extra cash during Little League Week. Take, for example, this fellow right over here. He's selling ice cream sandwiches. There are a lot of kids here who make a couple of extra bucks, about 75 kids in all. They make it by taking a percentage of what they sell. Now, they're not going to become millionaires during Little League work, but they do take in some extra money from this one week of the summer job. Many of the kids return year after year to try to make an extra buck. Some other people who return every year are fans, like the people you see behind me here at Howard J. Lomity Stadium in South Williamsport. Now, they're going to be here all week up until the final game of this championship series is played Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. That game will pit the final two teams out of eight who started here yesterday in a matchup to see who will be this year's Little League World Series rather championship game. Now, for that playoff game, it's expected that 30,000 spectators will show up. Now, if you can see over here in the stands, there are some empty seats. It's not going to be that way during Little League week, or rather Saturday, when the final game is played. The reason being, 30,000 people are going to be here. Now, it's first come, first serve on those seats. So if you want to come, get here early. If you can't, don't worry. There's plenty of seating right here on the bank. Karen, back to you. Craig, one more thing before you go and have some fun there at the ballpark. For people who aren't too familiar with the Williamsport area, how do you get to that stadium? Very easy. If you're coming from the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area, it's going to take you about an hour and 45 minutes to get here. The easiest way, catch Route 81 South, pick up Interstate 80 westbound toward Williamsport. Once you get to the Williamsport exit, there you can take Route 15 North right into South Williamsport. The road brings you right along the Little League complex. Now, if you're coming from the west, take either Interstate 80 or Route 220 again hook up with Route 15 northbound into Williamsport brings you right by the stadium of course from the north or south Route 15 is all you have to remember and you can get here hoping to see you Saturday okay Craig and by the looks of things those kids behind you didn't have any problems getting there not a bit Karen. thanks a lot and Newswatch 16 continues with an age-old warning from Action 16 and Mike Igo by George the telephone is coming in a different investigation, Action 16 and Mike Igo take a look at the Marine Surplus Products Company. Mike's conclusion, you get what you pay for. The brochure put out by Marine Surplus Depot gives the impression that you're buying military surplus items. An unhappy buyer wanted to show Action 16 one example of what you get for your money, so he sent along the company's binoculars. 
Well, even if it's not military surplus, we wondered if any of the brochure's promises held up. One of the claims Marine Surplus Depot makes in its brochure is that you can sit in the grandstand and actually lip-read a quarterback calling signals a full football field away, or 100 yards. So we took the binoculars here to West Piston and asked for the help of the Wyoming Area football team to see if the claim is true. 80 curl on three. Ready? We then went into the grandstands with the binoculars and sat a full football field away. At that spot, we could barely see the numbers on the jerseys, much less read the quarterback's lips. So we started moving closer. Eventually, we found out that to actually be able to lip read the quarterback, you had to get this close, about 20 yards. Marine Surplus Depot also claims its binoculars are so powerful, you can actually tell time in a clock a full mile away. The brochure didn't say what size clock, but to give them the benefit of the doubt, we used a clock which is about 10 feet in diameter. We picked an unobstructed spot less than a mile away. And even with a big clock, we certainly couldn't tell time. In fact, here's what the view looks like through our camera's lens, which magnifies things twice as large as the binoculars lens. We could go on, but the point here is that Action 16 has received piles of complaints about Marine Surplus Depot from people who are dissatisfied with their merchandise. So when you think you've found a good deal, remember, you'll probably get exactly what you paid for. Mike Igo, Action 16. And Tom Clark is next with the weather. He'll be live from the ballpark in South Williamsport. Hey, Joe. Tom Clark has an easy job this week, not only enjoying the Little League World Series, but enjoying all this sunshine you're uh -huh. predicting, Tom. Good job. Thank you, Karen. I want to tell you, these people here sure love their uh, Little League baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and, of course, weather like this. Very nice out here now. But uh, could it be that I will stand here again tonight and tell you that it's going to be just as nice again tomorrow? Well, I might do that. And... Uh, You'll see when the, within the next uh, three minutes. But before we get to that, let me show you what this stadium behind me looks like from uh, high above, uh, where Skycam 16 was flying this afternoon. And uh, it's, it's a nice stadium, really. And uh, that tape will be available hopefully later on. But uh, a big crowd here now. This game is uh, almost over. And uh, everybody having a good time. Very comfortable out here. Let's check that temperature outside now. And it stands at 82 degrees outside, and the humidity makes it bearable at 34 percent. The wind north at 6, and the barometer is now falling. But it's up there quite high, 30.31. The high today was 82, and the low this morning, 57. Records for this date, 92 and 44. There's the stadium behind you, live. Now, on Newswatch 16's color satellite photograph, you can see uh, okay, now look in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, that big white patch of cloudiness. That is Tropical Storm Barry. Uh, it's about uh, 160 miles west of Melbourne, Florida, and it's moving towards the west at about 10 miles per hour. Maximum winds now with the tropical storm, about 55 miles per hour, and the forecasters are calling for, for a, a landfall tomorrow morning near Cocoa Beach, and that's near Cape Canaveral. So uh, I don't think that storm's going to have much of an effect on our weather, but indeed the coast of eastern Florida is uh, preparing tonight for that tropical storm. Now look out over the Carolinas and heavy thunderstorms, those white blotches down that way. That broke the triple-digit heat wave that has existed down that way for the past four days, but still plenty hot this afternoon from South Carolina across Georgia, Mississippi, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. But now look up there in the right-hand corner from Pennsylvania up across the Great Lakes and New England, that clear, dry air mass we told you about yesterday, still in control of our weather. And uh, it'll hold its ground over us at least through tomorrow. But there is a stripe of clouds over the uh, upper Midwest, uh, a cold front forming out that way, and that could approach and bring us our next threat of thunder showers here late Friday as I see it now, so another dry day for sure. Here's our forecast for tonight in detail. A clear night, it'll be cool and tranquil. 
up there in Hartford in uh, Susquehanna County, 54, Exeter, 57. About 57 also for the low in Stroudsburg, Lock Haven, 58. And about 55 up there in Canton, 56 down in Ashland in Schuylkill County. For tomorrow, to get set, keep your sunglasses handy. Again, plenty of warm sunshine, another dry day. A southeast wind at no more than 7 miles per hour. Temperatures once again in the low to middle 80s. And uh, that'll be quite nice. About as warm as it was today. From the top, it looks like this. We have a clear night coming tonight. Maybe some patchy valley fog tomorrow morning, 57. Lots of sunshine again tomorrow, 82, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. And about Friday, hot, 87. Perhaps a late-day thunderstorm. On Saturday, partly sunny, 83. And Sunday, looks fair. Moonrise tonight comes at about uh, 9 p.m. It'll be a big full moon again tonight. And uh, Karen, I've made uh, lots of friends out here the past couple of days. I don't know whether it's me or this nice weather. Uh, I'd bet on the nice weather, Tom, but Would you're you? okay, too. Thanks so. a lot. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks that. Thanks a lot, Tom. And stay with us because we'll have all the action on the diamond next in South Williamsport. Joe's owning the sports when we come back. Food, fun, games, and entertainment galore at St. Martha's Festival on the parish grounds in Fairmount Springs. It all takes place Saturday and Sunday, September 3rd and 4th. There is music for dancing starting Saturday evening and continuing through Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And the food is delicious. In addition to the usual picnic fare, there's chicken and ham dinner Sunday afternoon from noon till 6 p.m. It's all at St. Martha's Festival in Fairmount Springs, Saturday and Sunday, September 3rd and 4th. Well, by now you're probably wondering who's winning down there in South Williamsport. Well, the man to tell you is Joe Zone. Joe, what's going on down there? Karen, we are nearing the end of the second game today, the game between the two remaining United States teams, the East versus the West. And it was a big six-run fifth inning that has put the East, the team from Stamford, Connecticut, on top right now, 6 nothing in the fifth. Let's pick up the action as we go live to the field right now in the bottom of the fifth inning, and the team from Sacramento, California, is batting as the umpire dusts off home plate. Let me tell you a little bit about what happened here so far. It was scoreless through the first four innings. Uh, three hits for the West team, just two hits for the East, and then the big fifth, five, six run, five inning for the East team. They put together a couple of doubles, a couple of singles. They've put six runs up on the board. They're leading now in the bottom of the fifth inning. As I said, the score is six to nothing, and now it's just a matter of the West team trying to get back in the game, but it looks like the East team is about to put the finishing touches on. As I said, right now we are in the bottom of the fifth, 6 nothing, Stamford, Connecticut over Sacramento, California. Earlier today, the two remaining foreign teams went at it, Canada and Latin America. And where do you see the highlights from this game? Lots of offense for a change. Right off the bat, first inning, watch the Latin American kids go to work. You're gonna see a home run, a ball hit to deep left field, and that will put up the Latin American team with a score of one to nothing. That was in the second inning. Then in the third inning. Now, the bases are loaded for Latin America again. And it's going to be Jose Almonte with a drive to deep left field. Watch it. And what a way to play in the Little League World Series. A grand slam home run that put Latin America ahead of Canada at the time. The final, uh, that made it five to nothing. Later on, a triple to score two more. And Latin America was on to win today in that first game. The final was eight to do. So... The winners today, Latin America and perhaps Stanford, if they hang on, will play the winners from yesterday. And those winners, you remember, was, was the team from Marietta, Georgia, and the team from Japan. They will play tomorrow in the semifinals. Okay.